I think CEH, also known as Clyde Edwards Elaire, is a very fascinating prospect. And I want to start off talking about some film. And really, to talk about him as a player, first I have to talk about just a little bit of scheme stuff real quick. This is, again, it's simple stuff, but this is stuff that I think is really important to know uh, when you're talking about football, is just the importance of really two players. So I've highlighted, you know, on this play to what you see on the screen is I'm circling uh you know, Patrick Mahomes and Clyde edwards Elaire, because those are the two players who will not be blocking on this play. It's a running play, so on a running play, unless your quarterback is running with the football, you get nine blockers. The Chargers have two safeties deep on this play. This is just what the Chargers do in general, is they kind of have the mindset of they're okay with giving up rushing yards, they don't want to give up passing yards, but this is also what teams just did against the Chiefs, is they would play two safety deep coverages a ton, because, you know, you don't want Tyree Kill to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, and really, you just don't want, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes to have any one-on-one -on -one matchups with any receiver, regardless of who it is. This is an effective strategy to defend the pass, because this now means that if you do want to throw it deep, there's going to be a safety in the area, meaning that you're basically going to throw it into a double team on almost every deep shot you have, unless it was a mistake by a safety or a really good scheme, uh, you're typically going to have to beat double coverage to make it work. So what is the counter to something like this? Well, the counter is running the ball, because think about it. Now there's two safeties deep, and there's two players who aren't going to be blocking. That means that everyone else is accounted for. Look, Kansas City will be able to block everybody else, and so this means that as long as they all make their blocks, which, listen, does not always happen, but as long as they do, this should be a pretty good run, and the closest player who could make a tackle would be relatively far down the field. I mean, this ball is going to get snapped at the 31-yard line, and they're currently at the 21-22 yard line, so this now means that you have kind of a 10-yard cushion, and that should make for a good run. And as you see, Mahomes give it to CEH, who does a good job of running on top of that. It was a well-blocked play, and he does pick up 10 plus yards on this play and you can really run the ball consistently if you have a good offensive line which the Chiefs do and you have a good halfback which is the question I actually think Clyde Edwards Hilaire has done a fine job in his role I don't think that he's been a bad player like something like this is a good example of kind of the added value that you'll see him have sometimes where so again everyone is going to be accounted for at the line of scrimmage and watch what happens so right when this play begins you see how it looks like you know i think a lot of halfbacks would have tried to fit through that gap the one i put on the screen with the white circle there uh that's the one i feel like a lot of uh halfbacks would have naturally tried to go to it looks like that's where they wanted him to go through pre-snap but he looks at it and says I think there's a better gap I can go through. This looks a little bit tough. And as you see, he does find a different gap, squeezes through it, and picks up a decent gain. Again, you're just gaining an extra couple of yards than you probably would have had you done the other thing, and that's what a halfback does, right? You're rarely going to have a play where you turn a two-yard gain into a 100-yard gain, uh, partially because a 100-yard gain is impossible, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, that, that's rare. It happens. It's not something that doesn't happen, but that's rare. What's far more common are plays like these, which you did a good job at. Something like this is another example where what's going to happen is this time there is a linebacker towards the right who is going to be unblocked at the line of scrimmage, but he's also going to go out uh, to cover Travis Kelsey. Who, so, you know, uh, that's how that works. Or excuse me, not Travis Kelsey, uh, other tight end 81. Uh, but regardless, watch what happens. So right when this play begins, again, Edwards Elaire takes the snap, and you see Joe Thune's block is really going to be the key one, because what, do, what would a lot of halfbacks do? Kind of just lower the shoulder, run forward, pick up the yards, and that wouldn't be a horrible move, quite frankly, given the situation that you're currently in. I would totally understand it if 25 for Kansas City, which is Edwards Elaire, if he did that. But watch CEH make this good move, and he actually gets by him, jukes him out, and picks up even more yards. So again, that's a good run by Clyde edwards Hilaire. I mean, edwards Hilaire's stats were pretty solid. He had 4.3 yards per carry. That's a good running back, you know, stat line. That's not bad whatsoever. So this stuff was good. Again, of course, a part of that is just a scheme. There's less guys in the box, so he should be d having better yards per carry than, you know, someone else who's, you know, that doesn't have a great quarterback. That's, of course, how that should work, but still. Let's move on to one like this, where again, it is going to be a running play, of course, because that's what we're doing here. We're talking about running plays. I pause it now, but I will, you know, just to set it up, but watch what happens. So you see Mahomes take the snap, give the ball to CEH, who starts to run up the middle, but then realizes there's a much better hole over to his left, and watch how good of a job he's going to do at getting through it. As you see, he does fit through that gap and picks up a decent gain. So again, these aren't highlight real level plays, and I get it. These aren't the sexiest plays you hope for. 
You drafted him with a first round pick. You were hopeful that he would be maybe a little better than this. Maybe he'd be a superstar. And of course, the fact that he was drafted in front of Jonathan Taylor is going to mean that he's going to get compared to Jonathan Taylor, which is honestly, I think, unfair, probably. This is where Edwards Elaire ranked in the consensus leaderboards. He was 45th, so he went 32nd overall. And in fact, the mock draft that had him the highest was 42nd. So he went 10 spots ahead of where he was the highest and went about half a round ahead of where people thought he would go. So that's an element of this, right? Is the fact that, well, you know, they overdrafted him. They reached on him because they liked the scheme fit. So the chances are sometimes when you do that, you can run into a little bit of trouble. That's something that absolutely can happen. For a comparison, you know, Jonathan Taylor was 37, so he was higher here. So, you know, that's something that happened as well. But to me, this kind of just is an element of this is, you know, who he was. You look at his college career stats in terms of PFF grades, like they're solid stats. This is kind of what you would expect from a mid second rounder is this is what you expect his PFF grades to be. And his value has been what you would hope for for a mid second rounder. Like he pretty much lived up to the hype in my opinion. It just, he got a little bit overdrafted and Jonathan Taylor more than, you know, lived up to the hype, which kind of makes it look, you know, tough in comparison. At the end of the day, I think CEH has been fine. I think he's done a good job. Like one of the issues with a running back is they just don't move the needle that much unless they're a superstar, which he has not been. This is kind of the issue with drafting a running back in the first round to begin with. And this is why, you know, especially analytics people, absolutely despise that idea. I've always stood by, I think if you're ready to compete right now and have no real holes, or if you believe that halfback is supposed to be, is going to be an elite guy, then it can be worth it. But uh, for CEH, you know, he fell in that first category, right? Of, hey, we feel like we don't have many holes. Let's get someone who can help us. But they actually did have some holes. So they probably should have drafted someone in a different position, which, uh, you know, in hindsight is probably true. But that's not really an, uh, an insult to Edward Zilaire, the player. The player, I think, has lived up to his potential and has been a fine halfback. I think it's more of an issue of why you don't draft halfbacks that early to begin with, because more often than not, this is what happens. Again, if they drafted Jonathan Taylor, the conversation changes, because Taylor has been elite, and an elite halfback does add a decent amount of value, but they didn't, so that's why it's not the best uh, draft pick. But again, I do think that people kind of, uh, in my opinion, I feel like people put the blame on the wrong player. I think people put the blame on the wrong person, I guess is what I should say, uh, of putting it on Edward Zilaire. He's been fine. He's done his, he's done his role, right? But you're, running backs are typically role players, and that's what you're going to do. So drafting a role player 32nd overall, it's just a bit of a reach. But again, if they drafted him 33rd, I think people wouldn't have cared as much, right? It's just that, you know, first round pick pedigree, it always gives you a little bit more hype. Uh, especially when it's a running back where that doesn't happen too often. And especially when Jonathan Taylor went after you, that's a tough one to swallow. But uh, I don't think that he's a bad player by any means. I think he's been fine. I think he's been fine. Excuse me. Uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.